start our today's uh, deliberations i would like to introduce our uh, chief guest sir sri pi joshi uh, the audience sir sri pi joshi secretary roads pwd he pwd has post educated from iit mumbai in 1985 he has received his master of technology in structural engineering he has joined the maharashtra services of engineers as assistant executive engineer class 1 in july 1985 Since July 1985, he has served in capacity as executive, superintendent, and chief engineer up to February 2016. He has taken over as secretary PWD Maharashtra from February 2016, and since then working as administrator of PWD till today. Sir Sipi Joshi, in his career spanning 34 years, has worked in the most difficult and remote areas of Maharashtra, such as Kokan border, border area of Solapur, and in broad prone areas of Maharashtra, Parakwad. In his career, he has supervised construction of 249 bridges, most of which are located in severe atmosphere of Ratnagiri and Sindhura districts. He has administered contracts and supervised four lining, six lining of 1,450 kilometers of state highways and upgradation of 10,000 kilometers of state highways to national highway standards. Sir C P Joshi has also obtained the LLB degree of the Mumbai University in 2004 and has fought many arbitration and high court cases and received decisions. in favor of the government in his early tenure of secretary 
He has been successful in upgrading and increasing the national highway road link in Maharashtra from 6,000 kilometers to 17,501 kilometer, and all these roads are now being provided with rigid permits. He has been successful in achieving sanction of Asian Development Bank loan of rupees 5,000 crore, through which. <coughs> 1,300 kilometers of state highways will be upgraded to international standards. From 1990, he has been associated with formulation of road development and bridge construction scheme under the Rural Infrastructure Development Fund of the Apex Body, NAVAR, India, and been successful for 24 years to receive loan assistance of rupees 500 crore every year, through which till date 6,000 major and minor bridges are completed in Maharashtra. We let's welcome Mr. Sufi Joshi with. Uh, uh, I now request Mr. Jain Bukhari to uh, start the uh, inauguration function and request Mr. Sipidoshi to inaugurate the, inaugurate the workshop. Status as if today, 
and what should be our course of action so that our future days, future years, future generations would have safe, sound sleep in the night and the people who have benefited because of our hard work, our sheer hard work are also having or using our facilities, our children as safe and sound passage whether they live in buildings or where they are on the roads. As a common man in Mumbai, we find that half of his life is in building or half the way he is on some road or some such. The practice of working in isolation now uh, has stopped. So as a construction engineer, what should happen on site is being thought in the design office, in the design studios and both are working together to find out proper solutions. As far as Maharashtra is concerned, since our formation of the state, we have built a very good and very large road network of 2,36,000 kilometers. In this road network, we have almost 1,11,000 bridges. As my career started as an assistant engineer, we were in the building phase. And now the way I am ending it, I am thinking of having a code of practice for rehabilitation. It's so a passage of 60 years. So person who is an engineer with all this, just I was working like them in the workshops. I feel the same energy right now. We evolve. We do many works, we see many works, we observe, we design and finally we come to know that some needs, some, some improvement is required. That stage now has come, where in what we call what it is, we have become mature enough to create a document, to create a standard operating procedure, to create a stipulation for our future generations, wherein they will have the basic ideas grouped together to, as to how to construct, as to how to supervise, as to how to inspect, as to how to monitor, as to how to rehabilitate a structure. Maybe in the form of a road, maybe in the form of a bridge or a building. It is our heart. Nothing and right now when we hear some news like this that the two spans of a bridge have failed on Krishna here causes a pain, causes a heartburn. We always see, you know, a death in a family is more. It happens. With the passage of years, with the passage of years in a family, there is some addition and there is some division. But in engineering structures, it is associated with society. <coughs> Not many people use it. They are familiar to it. So whenever a structure gets damaged, something happens to it. People remember it. I got a painful letter yesterday from one of my colleagues saying that a balcony collapsed and it literally fell on my mother. And what I could do? Is there any way to compensate for an engineering failure? Now, can we call it as a failure? We may, we may not. We know that at the age of 75, when I reach there, one of my venture has to go away. My facilities will be slightly degenerated. And then I will have to go to some medicines, use something, and to prevail upon till my end comes. It's just like that, we should think of our babies that we build the buildings and the bridges which are very critical in this transportation system and in this living system as to how they should be strengthened at appropriate time, how they should be watched and how they should be, how should they should be rehabilitated. The government of Maharashtra had formed a committee and we with the help of many different engineers sitting in this hall across the hall 
have formulated a document, initiated a document for giving you insight as to how to inspect, monitor the health of breaches and rehabilitate them very properly, systematically. The August organization that we have in India, Indian Roads Congress, is also having this thought in mind that the community should not think as us as criminals in planning, construction, design and rehabilitation. So, to save the future generations of the engineers who have mooted this thought that just like Indian Penal Code or some law of criminal procedure, we should have a national code of practice for construction, supervision, monitoring, maintenance and rehabilitation of roads and bridges. This will take some months, let us say, or some time to come up with that. Once that is in place, nobody in a society, a civilized society like us, will say that I will not follow this practice. They will have to go for it. To recap and to summarize, uh, I have requested uh, Picons and they gladly agreed and they have arranged this 70th workshop as an imminent or immediate need of in developing or initiating the thought process at different local centers of institution of engineers wherein we all will be meeting and having a united mind, united mind to create awareness amongst our own people to have this need of standard practice of working, standard operating procedure for the rehabilitation, for the construction, for the monitoring and in general having a well maintained, well healthy bridge, a healthy building. We are working on this uh, consistently, continuously and many of you have helped us. The document is in the process of approval and will be given approval by the government very shortly. But the blame on the community in future, if something goes wrong, will be evaluated in the proper way. If there was some design deficiency, it will be taken care of. If there was some problem that occurred during maintenance, in our own way, that will be taken care of. And the community as a whole will not miss it. Using in the market. So, from the points of view of users, the administration, the law, we must have some standard operating procedure document developed by us because we are the users of it. We are the persons with music in the future. And that national code of practice shall be in place, which shall be a valid document in the course which shall be a valid document for the use of all the users. And there should be no deferment because the minds which are illuminated have the same intensity of light. So they think in the same. The second issue that is important for us is to develop a team, develop a system for monitoring the health of our structures, which at present we we are slightly government is the dominant uh, user or let us say government and the local body <coughs> are more, uh, more often the creators of all these facilities once a structure is built it is used everybody likes it and all of a sudden they say that Amar Mahal is built and then we face that problem as to how to go for it. We repair and then again it is provided. It's a news. The repair is a news. The opening is a news. It becomes a news again only when there is a distress. This should not happen in our community at least. That we should always see all our structures as our points wherein we should attend to. Just like we always attend to our sons and daughters. And that system of inspection, that system of monitoring, that system of carrying out the repairs under a 
a seasoned, observed eye. And then again monitoring its health till we build something new nearby. It's a system, it's a need of the outlet. As I see in my last 30 years, I did have a small bridge built by my government to cross the Thanik Creek Bridge. It was built, there were some problems we faced. We had we have built a new bridge. Again, it is not sufficient because the traffic is here. It is getting distressed. We are not in a position to repair it. So we started new bridge. There are so many bridges which are which will be coming up then to repair to rehabilitate them is a major hurdle major task for us we need to develop specialized systems for it also. <coughs> we should think of having construction having design in such a way that they are maintainable they are accessible for inspection and in future we should maintain their health very well. With this thought, I thought this is an opportunity to me to be with you. I wanted to be here for the whole day to discuss, to evolve some idea and to evolve something as a policy. But time doesn't matter. Many meetings do not So I thought I will come here in the morning. I was here at 30. With this young boy, I shared my knowledge. It was wonderful to be. It is wonderful to be with you. Kindly uh, start the process, discuss the idea. The speakers are eminent. Their work is noted by the society itself. And in the end, with all this ignition in mind, you can help us create something which is best for our future generations. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir, for very valuable and apt words. All your words will definitely give us inspiration, and we will try to come up with some documentation. In fact, initially we had planned for two days session, which could not happen for various reasons. So we are saying this as a part one. We are trying to conduct. Part two, see with the gap of uh, one and a half month, and we'll try to compile all the papers what we have, and try to come out with some kind of document. And there are very senior, expert, involved person uh, in this auditorium who are going to speak in following few minutes. So with this, I can uh, de uh, declare that our inauguration session is over. Sir has to go for the budget work, so we will relieve him and in the next 10 minutes we will start our next session. Thank you sir for coming all the way.